Let's do four downs here. Let's do it. Okay. Hut, hut. Four downs with Rich. Here we go. Okay. First down. Here's my first down. There cannot be an NFL team based in London. With having seen it myself, there just can't be. And that has nothing to do with the passion for the game in London. I saw it with my own two eyes. The Brits love the National Football League. They really do. They talk about it. They're into it. They're getting more into it. It's never going to surpass their football. Sure. Uh, the Sunday night football games are, they kick off at either midnight or one in the morning, depending on what time of the year it is. We turn clocks back over the weekend there. You know, obviously what we're doing. Oh, right. This so, um, I, I didn't even see Deshaun Watson throw for those five touchdowns because I slept. I was asleep during the Thursday night football game and the same with the Sunday night game. Didn't even see them. So it's tough to sell the sport there in that regard, but it is being sold. And the stadium, it was a, it was a Wembley crowd, 85,000 people. But again, the reason why there can't be a team is exactly for the reason why I was asleep during some of these Sunday night and Thursday night games. The time difference is just an impossibility for these guys to get used to. I have no idea how the Jacksonville Jaguars were able to arrive on Friday and despite having a nap, some of them were able to go and, and to some burlesque spot and not pay a bill and get detained. I, I have no idea. And again, it's not because I'm a near 50-year-old man. It is, it's just the time zone and the jet lag is just too much for a team. It's, it would be such a competitive advantage for any team that's based in London against a team that would come from the East or the West Coast. And then on top of it, on top of it all, is that the NFL playoffs, if the London team has the home game, any team that comes from the East or West Coast would have to go there on a Sunday. How would you be able to play a game the next week or the week before? It's just an impossibility to do that. Now, what they're doing next year is they're having four games in, in uh, London next year, two in Tottenham and two in Wembley. And that's what they might do is have an entire season for the Brits to, to sample. But to base a team there in London, I just think makes absolutely no sense. It is just not workable having seen it with my own two eyes. That's first down. Second down. Okay, now uh, the, the, the stories of the season obviously are the teams that are in first place, right? Um, and the, the kid in Kansas City, Patrick Mahomes, has caught the entire nation's fancy. You've got Drew Brees finally um, on path to win an MVP award, it seems, and get it. Um, you've got what the Rams are doing right here at 8-0. So the best, least discussed story of the first half of the season is the emergence of James Conner and his story. And how uh, it's even being overshadowed by the fact that Le'Veon Bell might be the most discussed running back in Pittsburgh. But we all know what James Conner has done on this field, although you may not know exactly based on the numbers of what he's pulled off. But his story coming from uh, Pittsburgh, he played college in uh, Pittsburgh, and he had Hodgkin's lymphoma, was announced in December of 15. He had his last chemo in May of 16 when he also announced on Twitter that he was cancer-free. And he's been standing there watching Le'Veon Bell play football. And now he has a chance. And all he has done is just perform better than Le'Veon Bell has ever performed in the first eight weeks of a season. And it's not just Le'Veon Bell. James Conner, last week with a career-high 146 rushing yards and 24 carries, and he had 66 receiving yards, a career-high 212 scrimmage yards. He's got four games now with at least 110 on the ground and two rushing touchdowns this season. That's the most such games in a single season in Steelers history. And he's tied for the most rushing touchdowns nine by a Steelers player in the first seven games of a season since 1950. Only Franco Harris has had more than that. So here, if Le'Veon Bell, this might be a successful holdout for him because he wanted to do two things. He wanted to make a point, And I think he thinks he's made it, despite what the Steelers record might be, is how valuable he might be. Uh, but on top of it, he wants to save tread on his tires. Guess what? He comes back. There's no way you just give... The ball to Lev Bell. He's going to have to share time with James Conner. And as a matter of fact, just let James Conner keep running the ball and maybe have Le'Veon Bell just supplement him until you get what you want if you're Pittsburgh. Imagine that, Le'Veon Bell, a third down back. James Conner is the best, least discussed story of the first half of this season. Here's third down. Third down. So now uh, I think Todd Gurley is the first half MVP, and we're going to give that award out tomorrow. And I know that Prime was here yesterday, and he backed up and echoed what Moose Johnston said when he called into the show is that it's Drew Brees and you cannot argue that. You cannot argue that. Don't think so. My argument for Todd Gurley is the following. 
there ain't no. That's number one. You got to go with the team with the best record in my mind. And who's the best player on that team? Despite what Jared Goff is doing, it is Todd Gurley. What this guy is doing is unbelievable. He scored a touchdown in 11 straight games. That's the longest active streak in the NFL. Second most touchdowns from scrimmage in the first eight games in NFL history. 15 behind only Jim Brown. And as he showed at the end of the game, much to the dismay of particular gamblers and fantasy owners of, <laughs> of Todd Gurley, he is situationally aware and brilliant. He made the right move by not scoring. And I know if he scored, and the extra point, it would have been nine, but the extra point's not guaranteed in the NFL anymore. Smart move. Don't let the ball back in Aaron Rodgers' hands. He's situationally brilliant. He's smart. He's tough. He is dynamic. He's the MVP through three weeks. Fourth down. All right. My favorite part of the week. Rich going to get the hot take plank. Fourth it. down. I have it. Let's do it. I've been here before with the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> Last year, I said they would not be picking in the top five. Uh, you were sort of right. Draft. They had two picks they in the top five. You know what happened? Two picks in the top yeah. five. Uh, this year, I started the season by saying that they would not pick in the top ten. This year, yeah, that's what they you have said. two wins entering the second half of the season, and now they have nobody who has been a veteran play caller in the National Football League. To call the offense. <laughs> Hugh Jackson has done it, is gone. Todd Haley is gone. Freddie Kitchens called plays in week four of the preseason in that all important victory over Jake Rudock and the Lions. So, who the hell knows what this is going to look like on the offensive side of the ball? But they've got a lunatic who's now their interim head coach. Greg Williams is nuts, people. <laughs> and that's why the Browns are going to win half of their remaining games what? in the interim reign of Greg Williams. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> hey, be, pipe down. Pipe down, Kawhi from Toronto. There's no 55-yard line here. I'll tell you what. Greg Williams is a particular brand of crazy. I've met him. He knows football. He knows defense. And he knows that there's no actual way that they should be winning football games with their current construct, but that's why I believe in him. He's just going to rile it up. They're home against Kansas City and Atlanta. They got a bye week. Then they're at Cincinnati, at Houston, home for Carolina, at Denver, home for Cincinnati, at Baltimore. Watch him win half just because he's nuts, and this whole situation is going to get turned upside down just because. My first fourth down hot take plank take of just because. That's the way I'm going to roll. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.